Welcome. The subject of this video is using the Raspberry Pi to control the Arduino microcontroller. This setup that you see before you is a combination of about two weeks work. Uh, in this series we're not only going to look at electronics and how to pr program and control uh, Arduino as a slave with the Raspberry Pi but how to create a fast and efficient operating system. Let's point out what we have here and a few hints on how to get this set up. Okay, this is a powered USB hub. It has about a 2 to 3 amp rating. This is what I use to power the entire setup, be it the, be it the Raspberry Pi, be it the uh, Arduino and associated components. I highly recommend going this route. You gotta, if you look up here at your Raspberry Pi, the first thing you need to note, and I strongly emphasize this, you may not be able to see it through the case. Well, let me focus in on the case just a little bit closer. Now, it's a little hard to see through the reflective glare. All right, let's note a few things. This, of course, is your SD card it plugs in upside down that's your composite video that's your audio output as you probably know and yes I have the audio working in this system this is a thumb drive that I keep attached and behind it is the cable that runs down to the USB hub okay here's the connection to the video monitor this is the power cable for the Pi, which also plugs into the USB hub. Uh, what you need to see in here, and it's sort of, let's see if I can't, yeah, see the black square thing off left of the center. That is a heat sink. The two main chips in here, you must heat sink them. They get hot, and when you try to do overclocking, they get even hotter. I can't emphasize this strongly enough get some heat sinks. The USB thumb drive I've programmed to detect upon boot up, I use that for storing most of my programs that I don't want lost in case I crash something on the main Raspberry Pi. Alright, let's focus in on the Arduino board. Let's move over. Let's move down. Alright, here is your ribbon cable with a board adapter from the Raspberry Pi. I highly recommend going with that. Um, it will make the chances of miswiring something a whole lot less. The bus here puts out 3 volts and 5 volts. Don't connect the 3 volt side to the 5 volt side. Uh, you could damage the input pins. Various people on the web says it doesn't hurt it, and it may not, but why take a chance and wreck your Raspberry Pi? This here is a 3 to 5 volt level converter. I use it. It was bought off of eBay. It's inexpensive. It's just a group of uh, MOSFETs. One side is 5 volts, one side is 3 volts, and I can feed signals uh, between the Pi and 5 volt uh, components on the other side. Let's move this little ribbon cable. This is a DS1307 real-time clock. I'll show you how to uh, program the Raspberry Pi to have an actual hardware clock. This is what it functions as. It's connected through the I2C. Over here, of course, is my Arduino Nano. In addition to being connected to the Raspberry Pi through the I2C, I also can program Arduino through the Raspberry Pi. And it, it, it's a tad slow, but it works. And it's faster than trying to use a separate computer. Um, that's part of what I did when I came up with a faster operating system is it allowed me to use slightly heavier use hardware 
without crashing or loading the whole system down. Up here, uh, you've probably seen this from my other videos. Let's look in a little bit closer on it. Let's focus in a tad so you can see it just a little bit better. Okay, right now I'm getting ready to run a program in Python on the Raspberry Pi. And there you go. The count you're seeing is the co is a count being sent from the Raspberry Pi to Arduino that it displays there, and then it sends the Raspberry Pi back a return message. Um, yeah, simple program, but it has a, gr a good point. Uh, you can use the Raspberry Pi, for instance, to, to, with these I2C type sensors. But a, but a lot of your sensors are not I2C. And, uh, and your stepper motors are certainly not I2C. What the crux of what I'm looking at here is to use the Arduino for the specialized non-I2C sensors, the stepper motors, the servo motors, and tons of other stuff. And it is going to be operating in the slave mode with the... Uh, Raspberry Pi operating as a front end, a more visual front end or a terminal. Like I said, my emphasis here was to convert the Raspberry Pi into a fully functioning and fast Linux system, and I believe I've done that. And I'll be showing you how that's, I'll be showing you some videos later on the ver how it's been done in various ways to choose multiple desktops even how to combine desktops and put in your own software uh, I will have a whole section devoted to this it will be using Openbox, Jim's Window Manager parts of XF, uh, the XFCE desktop if you want it or parts of the LXDE desktop that comes with it which, by the way, to me is excruciatingly slow. Um, so that's so much for this part of the video. Let's turn to the other videos and I will show you around the operating systems and some of how they operate. Thanks for watching. Okay, what you're looking at is one of my desktops. This one uses the uh, Roxfiler pinboard, and it is combined with the Openbox window manager. And I'll show you around to some of the features. With Openbox, you have what is, uh, this is produced by a program called Tint2, I guess that's your tray. You right click the mouse to produce a menu. And I've produced a fairly extensive menu for programming and various other problem, uh, ideas that I wanted to use. And I also have icons. Uh, for the money, Roxfiler is one of the most powerful pieces of software out there for, as I say, roll your own desktops. I'll also be showing you Jim's window manager in a few minutes. The idea is speed, okay? How's that for fast? Do I need to look on the thumb drive? There's the thumb drive. Uh, what else do I need to do? Uh, maybe I need a text editor. You know one that works pretty fast? Like... Beaver. Oh, okay. What if I need to edit a text file? Oh, let's argue this is some kind of C file. Why don't I drag this over here, drop it on Beaver, and there it is. I'm ready to write my program. Beaver is a package that I compiled from source, um, and it's available from my website to add to this. It's, much, it's a much better text editor than, say, stripped down ones like leaf pad but it's not bloated and slow like Gini. and it has uh, several features such as you can correct mistakes and so forth um, what if I want to add another 
uh, icon to my desktop. Mm, let's pick something. Let's say this is just a folder called Linux. Drop, drag, open. There it is. Just like that. Let's look at a few other programs that we have. Uh, I have the audio system completely up and working. I chose. I started this out with PyBang, which defaults to a really stripped down, down open box system. If I uh, let's click the little music player over here. This is LX Music. I'm going to remove remove that item. What if I want to listen to some music? I got music up on uh, my thumb drive. Let's find music. Let's open it. Let's drag it over there. Double click on it. Let me cut my speakers on. And there's ELO. What if I need to control the volume? Another piece of software that I produced. Z mixer. This is another fast piece of software and it has a nice visual interface for a volume control. What other goodies do I have in here? Um, I uploaded the Dillo web browser, much faster for just reading, uh, particularly if you're going to a website that you just want to read things like how to set up Linux use this. If you try to use the Midori that comes with uh, both PyBang and the official Raspbian, uh, it's so slow. Okay, let's look at a few features here. You are, let's, you are looking at Roxfiler. The system also has PC Man File Manager and Thuner installed in there as well. If we hit the uh, little house symbol here, I'm right back in my home directory. You notice the little I here. Well, I can right click it if I'm in something like, uh, like a bunch of uh, pictures and it will make thumbnails, but if I left click it, there's all my hidden files. I can increase the files up to a size that you can see. The secret to this whole system is two things. It's called .xinitrc. Let's open that up as a text. You have to set it as a you can oh, and by and you can download this particular file from my site. Let's put this down just a little bit. Okay, here it is, and by commenting out and in various different things, I can produce differing desktops. Okay, this one, for instance, uses Tint2. Uh, if you look down here, if you can see it in the bottom, that's your let's clip it. There's your volume control in the panel. There's your clock. Tint2 is your tray down here. I don't use um, Tint2 with, say, JWM. Let's go over to JWM. You don't use Tint2. So it's real simple to comment it out. Uh, I'm going to use the pin board over there. And instead of using OpenBox LXDE or OpenBox Session, I'm going to comment that out. I'm going to uncomment JWM. JWM is available in the in the Debian repositories. This is a Debian based system. And my website will show you how to construct all of this uh, for yourself. Ah, problem we had there. Okay, I'll go ahead and redo. I have to do that as root. Ah, problem. Nope, I can't save it. So if you run into a problem, 
Okay, good. This is the ROX terminal that I upload and use in this. And all you got to do is uh, sudo. Beaver is my text editor. Dot X inet RC. Hit enter. Now I can alter it. I'll go ahead and alter it and boot back up on JWM and show you around.